Hey, so remember a couple of reviews ago when I said that I'd try to bang out those March 24th albums in one week? Yeah, it didn't really turn out that way. Sorry. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Spinner Reviews, and today I'm going to be talking about the debut album from Big Data called 2.0. So Big Data is an electronic music project formed in 2012, and it was originally a duo comprising of Alan Wilkes and Daniel Armbruster. However, a short time after they formed, uh, Daniel left to focus on his band Joywave. And if those two project names sound familiar, that's because Joywave was featured on Big Data's big alternative chart-topping hit, Dangerous. With a slick, infectious bass line set against the kind of hyper-paranoid lyrics, the song uh, really made an impact in certain indie music circles, myself included. Um, it was originally from the EP 1.0, and now, a bit over a year later, we have the aptly titled album 2.0. Now, at first, I was mainly into Dangerous because it's, you know, a catchy, well-written piece of electronically tinged indie pop. But once I started really getting into what Big Data was about, I started getting more and more intrigued with this project altogether. See, the term Big Data in this context refers to the massive amounts of information that certain corporations keep about people, particularly on the internet. And a major theme of Big Data's music is, uh, like I hinted at with Dangerous, uh, the paranoia that some people feel knowing that these corporations have access to so many aspects of the public's lives. The way 2.0 tackles this tends to vary from track to track. Sometimes it's from the perspective of someone who is in a serious state of discomfort from this, which is a little more direct, and other times it's from the perspective of these corporations themselves, obviously done in a very heightened and even satirical way. But at the same time, while this heavy subject matter is going on, Big Data managed to keep things relatively down to earth by, like with Dangerous, going for this very accessible, hooky, electro, indie pop sensibility, with guest vocalists on nearly every track that help keep things engaging even when the subject matter might go over people's heads a little. Perfect example of this is the opener and current single, The Business of Emotion, with White C, a song all about the Facebook mood experience that came to light a couple years ago. This is one of the more satirical tracks, where Facebook is essentially reveling in the fact that they can alter people's emotional well-being through their news feeds without them even knowing it. Now, needless to say, this is quite the haunting concept, but again, they managed to counteract this with this bouncy electro-pop production, pounding percussion, and a really fun chorus if you don't take into account the whole manipulating is and people's emotions thing. Plus, like with a lot of this album, the lyrics are subtle enough that they can apply to more than just this one event. Like, I can see some people thinking this is some twisted love song or something. Same applies for the very cleverly titled Snowed In, where somehow Alan got Rivers Cuomo from Weezer to sing and co-write an electro-pop banger about the NSA scandal. Now, given Weezer's one of my favorite bands, there is naturally a bit of positive bias for me to like this song, but to me this definitely is one of the major highlights on the album. Powered by these glitchy, buzzing synths, the song shows Rivers essentially playing as the NSA, trying to control and console the public after Edward Snowden essentially turned the entire country against them, with just the right amount of robotic tone in his voice to make the lovey-dovey chorus all the more unsettling when it's pitched down a bit at the end of the song. The singer Jamie Lydell gives probably my favorite vocal performance on this whole album on the song Clean a soulfully delivered jam all about the fear of conforming to this big, looming organization. It is a little vague in what exactly he is afraid of, but I can see it uh, relating to some people in certain situations one way or another. Also, I love the big, meaty, hard rock guitar riffs on the song Get Some Freedom with the band Dragonette. 
which basically acts as an ad from some unnamed online corporation that promises protection, but might have something a little more underhanded in store for its customers. Maybe you could say it's about antivirus software, but it's really one of those that's open to interpretation. Meanwhile, a running element of this album is Alan himself doing backing vocals on a number of these tracks, something you don't normally see from electronic music producers who rely mainly on guest singers. In fact, on the song Big Dater, he takes lead on the whole thing and actually sounds pretty good. I really wouldn't be surprised or all that upset if he uh, took this approach more in the future. Lyrically, Big Dater is probably the most relatable out of any song here, basically talking about relationships people have with others online, and how they contort their own personalities to seem like better versions of themselves, sometimes without even realizing it. For some, this album is going to be quite the brain challenge, especially if you're from, say, my generation, where you're a weirdo if you don't spend at least half your day checking your social media feeds. And even as someone like me who is kind of a Facebook junkie, it does kind of make you think twice about certain things you do and see online. Now, I do have an issue here and there, namely that on a couple tracks, it does feel like the guest singers can get swallowed up by the production with these weird little vocal effects put in for no good reason, mostly on The Glow with Kimbra, and to a lesser extent Perfect Holiday with Twin Shadow, despite those both being very good songs otherwise. The song Automatic with Jen from Y Oak does feel about a minute and a half too long to me, and there are a few moments where the message can come off as a little unfocused or cluttered or vague. There's definitely a line or two where the paranoia is played up a bit too much to be as effective as it could be. I honestly feel like Big Data's message could be a bit better constructed if he went for like, a, I don't know, a narrative concept album where this guy is going through some internet related existential crisis. But otherwise, Big Data's 2.0 left quite the impression on me, and I'm going to give it an 8. There's something weirdly kind of cool about the contradiction of an electronic music album all about the fear of technology, and Big Data pulled that off really well, and wrote some great catchy songs in the process. If that sounds intriguing to you, and I have no idea why that wouldn't, then definitely check this thing out. So if you guys have heard this album, what do you think about it? Do you agree with what I had to say? Disagree? Have any feedback about the channel in general? Let me know in the comments down below. And I'm sure this around with anyone who might be interested. Like the Facebook page in the description for updates. And hopefully I'll see you in the next episode of Spinner Reviews.